2024 Ford Tourneo Connect and Tourneo Courier are both multi-passenger vehicles offered by Ford, but they cater to different needs. Here's a breakdown to help you choose. 2024 Ford Tourneo Connect RRP price range $31,434 to £35,706 and Tourneo Courier RRP price range $25,840 to £28,360. Size and Seating Tourneo Connect, this is a larger MPV that can seat up to seven passengers depending on configuration. It offers more cargo space when seats are folded. Tourneo Courier, this is a compact MPV with seating for up to five passengers. It's more maneuverable and better suited for urban driving. Performance Tourneo Connect, engine options are likely to be more powerful, with choices that might include a 2.0L EcoBoost engine. Tourneo Courier, offered with a smaller and more fuel-efficient engine, like a 1.0L EcoBoost engine with options for varying horsepower. An electric version, the e Tourneo Courier, is also available in some regions. Overall Tourneo Connect, ideal for larger families or those who frequently need to transport passengers or cargo. Tourneo Courier, perfect for small families or those who prioritize maneuverability and fuel efficiency. Since the 2024 Tourneo Connect isn't officially released yet, information might be limited. Stay tuned for updates closer to the launch date. The Ford Tourneo Connect comes with either a 112 brake horsepower 1.5 liter petrol engine or a 2.0 liter diesel with 120 brake horsepower. They're both available with a 6 speed manual gearbox or a 7 speed double clutch automatic. We've driven both versions with auto gearboxes, and our pick of the engines would be the diesel, which has plenty of low end shove. It's not that the petrol is a bad match for the Tourneo Connect, but it does need to be worked hard to get the best performance, and has a slower 0 to 62 mph time of 11.9 seconds for the non-grand version, versus the diesel's 11.2 seconds time. At the time of launch all Tourneo Couriers come with a 123 brake horsepower version of Ford's familiar 1.0-liter 3-cylinder EcoBoost petrol engine. That can be combined with a 6-speed manual or 7-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox, and in the future we'll see an all-electric e-Tourneo Courier that should also share its 134 brake horsepower powertrain with a Puma EV. Heck, the two cars are built on exactly same line in the same factory in Romania. Expecting a 99 brake horsepower petrol engine to cope with a car that weighs 1,320 kilograms might seem optimistic at best, but don't fear. The Tourneo Courier uses an engine available for the Ford Focus Estate and it doesn't feel out of place in this bigger package. In fact, it even beats the 128 brake horsepower 1.5-liter diesel engine in the rival Vauxhall Combo Life for real-world power and progression. The auto gearbox delivers quick and smooth gear changes once you're on the move. We've tried the six-speed manual box in the VW Caddy cargo van and it has a slick, purposeful shift action, so we'd expect the same in the Tourneo Connect. The diesel engine is a bit grumbly at idle and really needs the extra seventh gear to keep engine noise low at a cruise. The petrol engine is a bit quieter and smoother, but not by much. The steep windscreen and chunky door mirrors also create more wind noise than more CarLife MPVs. The Tourneo Courier there's actually a surprising amount of kick from the petrol, especially at low revs, which makes pulling away from traffic lights a breeze. Acceleration remains reasonably strong right up to 4000 RPM, and its flexible mature means you don't have to change down too often makes an overtaking surprisingly easy. We've yet to try the diesel, but it produces a bit more torque than the petrol and should be a good bet if you see yourself regularly lugging a laden tourneo up steep inclines. Despite its van origins, the driving experience in the Tourneo Connect is not dissimilar to in a car, with accurate steering and strong brakes. Even so, due to its height and weight, it can't match the composure of the best MPVs, the VW Touran for example. The Tourneo Courier picks up surface imperfections quite readily, especially if they're sharp. On a particularly poor town road the constant thumping can prove somewhat grating, but once you get on more open roads with gentler undulations, the Tourneo Courier copes rather better and feels generally quite comfortable. The Tourneo Connect suspension also tends to make a loud thump over bumps and imperfections, resulting in a crashy low-speed ride. 
On the plus side, body lean isn't as extreme as you might expect in such a tall vehicle. Grip levels are ample, and it can cope with you trying to get a wriggle on down a country road. The Tourneo Courier Body Lean is also surprisingly well contained for such a tall car, and this, along with grippy handling and accurate steering, makes the Tourneo Courier easy to manage around corners. The steering is pretty accurate but unnecessarily heavy at parking speeds, like the ride, it lightens up and feels better resolved the faster you go. Performance Overview The Tourneo Connect Strength Strong Diesel Engine, Slick Auto Gearbox, Surprisingly Good Handling. Weaknesses petrol engine is underpowered, poor refinement, crashy low-speed ride. The Tourneo Courier wind and road noise are both noticeable at speed, but the thrumming engine, which is ever-present in town, quietens down once you hit a steady 70 mph cruise. Interior The Ford Tourneo Connect is a step ahead of the mechanically similar VW Caddy here, because as well as that car's range of adjustments in the seat and steering wheel, it also has adjustable lumbar support as standard. Likewise, front and rear parking sensors are standard on the Tourneo Connect, whereas you'll have to go for pricier life trim and the Caddy to get them. A rear-view camera is available as an option, but it's not vital because the big windows give you a fine view out. As for the Caddy, the Tourneo Connect has a disappointing interior that's full of hard plastics, only the armrests get soft surfaces, which marks down the Tourneo against the Dacia Jogger with its tasteful cloth trim and satin chrome accents. There are a few storage space in the dashboard and central console, which also has twin cup holders. All versions of Tourneo Connect get the larger 10 inches. Touchscreen infotainment screen that's reserved for the options list of the Caddy. Saturn AV is standard, as is DAB radio, and Android Auto and Apple CarPlay smartphone connectivity. Having a larger screen is useful, but the infotainment is basically a Volkswagen system that first saw the light of day in the VW Golf and is not the best. A Ford skin has been applied over the top, but it has the same confusing menu arrangement. The lack of physical, or illuminated, controls for the aircon becomes infuriating, especially at night. Even changing the volume of the radio can be fiddly, and is best done using the buttons on the steering wheel. The Courier There's no option of electric seat adjustment for the driver in the Ford Tourneo Courier, although manual seat height adjustment is included as standard. The steering wheel adjusts for height but not reach and is set quite far forward, so those with short legs might find it too close. Visibility is excellent, with an expansive windscreen that stretches high above your field of vision. Wide door mirrors make the car easy to maneuver, and its straight-edged, boxy shape allows side and rear windows that are deep, wide, and unobscured. The only trim level for the Tourneo Courier is ZTEC. You get a DAB radio, Bluetooth, and USB connectivity but not an infotainment screen. Instead, there's a dock that enables you to set your smartphone into the dashboard, but you can upgrade to a 4.0 inches digital screen or 6.0 inches color touchscreen with satin AV. A driver's armrest in colored cloth upholstery that give the Tourneo Courier a slightly less utilitarian feel than its. Connect Stablemate, but the rest of the interior is a riot of scratchy plastics. They are, though, at least durable and easy to clean. Passenger and boot space. We've tested the Ford Tourneo Connect and the Ford Grand Tourneo Connect, the longer version. In both models, the cavernous interior means there's plenty of shoulder, head, and leg room in the front, while the second row seats are wide enough to allow three adults to sit side by side with only mild shoulder rubbing. In the standard wheelbase version, rear leg room isn't particularly generous, and you can't slide the seats back and forth, as you can in the VW Touran. Plus, the way the two front seats are arranged in both versions means the two outer back seat passengers have to sit slightly skewed to fit their feet under the seat ahead of them. The Grand Tourneo Connect, with its longer wheelbase, allows for the second row seats to be pushed back further, liberating more legroom, so it's the one to go for if you regularly transport taller people in the back. On seven-seat cars, the removable third row is mounted fairly close to the floor, so underthigh support is lacking. Legroom is tolerable for adults, more so than in the seat Turaco and the VW Tiguan Allspace 3rd. Rows, while headroom is excellent. You get twin sliding rear doors, but there's a high sill to clamber over to get in, which might cause problems for passengers with mobility issues. 
Boot capacity is excellent when only five seats are in place.